Today we're going to talk about something new and different. A lot of people have been asking how to install Clipper on their Octopus by Big Tree Tech. And so the process for this I'm going to walk you through. But what you need to understand is Clipper is a reduced instruction set processing. So what happens is the processing of movement is actually processed on the Octopi. In this case, that would be the Raspberry Pi. So we're using a faster processor to send the computations to our printer. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the actual install process. So I'm going to pick up the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to remove the SD drive. Once the SD drive is removed, I'm going to place it into here so that we can image the drive. So I'm going to plug this into the computer. You may hear a beep. Okay, so now that we actually have a browser up, I have to show you where we can get Clipper. So I'm going to type Clipper inside here. And this will bring us to the Clipper web page. So on the web page, we actually have instructions that says installing. So we're going to click on that. Now the first thing it says is to install Octopi. So in order to do that, I'm just going to open a second tab and I'm going to say Octopi and press enter. And so here's the actual web page for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on this download in order to set it up. Once we have that, it should be downloaded to our computer. So we're going to go to our actual downloads folder. And as you can see, it comes as a zipped file. So in order to extract it, we're going to have to right click and click on extract all. And inside extract all, we'd say us extract. But seeing how I've already done it, I'm going to cancel out of here and just show you what it looks like. And right here, it's an image file. So what we're going to do next is actually set up the image on our drive. So here's the Raspberry Pi imager. I'll leave a link in the description, but I'll show you how to do this real quick. So I'm going to choose the OS. In this case, I'm going to use custom. Then I'm going to select our image file in our downloads directory and open that up. Then I'm going to say choose storage. And in this case, I'm going to grab the SD drive that we have plugged in the USB. And then I'm going to click right. Now this may take upwards of 10 minutes to do. So What's going to happen next when you click right is it's going to say all existing data is going to be wiped out. We're going to say yes to that for now. So this may take a moment to actually image. So I'll speed this up when it's complete. Okay, now that it's finished imaging, I need to remove the USB drive for a second and reinsert it so I can see it. Now it's going to populate in just a second, like you can see, and it says boot. So inside here, what we need to do is actually modify our supplicant file. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to open it with Notepad++ because Notepad that's default to your operating system may cause issues. So now that I have this actually open, what we need to do is actually modify for our particular router what we're doing. And as you can see, there's little hash marks in front of these you're going to have to remove those to enable it. So the ones you're going to remove are this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now where it says put SSD, or excuse me, put SSID here, that's going to be the name of your router. Then down here, the PSK is actually the password to your router. So I'm going to do that off camera because I'd rather not share it. And in a moment, what we'll do is we'll actually load it onto the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to insert the drive. So I'm going to pop it out of the computer. I'm going to take the SD card out. I'm going to flip over the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to insert the drive in here. Then I'm going to have to power it. So in order to power it, we're going to have to have a known good power supply. And that will be something that you can get with a Canva kit. So I'm going to plug this in. 
and it's going to power up. Now this may take a moment to actually power up. And then what we'll have to do is configure the Raspberry Pi. And I'll show you some tricks to doing that in just a moment. So normally what you would do to find your IP address for your OctoPi, in this case, would be to use your router and then see what connected devices there are. But I want to show you another way to do this. So I opened up a DOS window and I'm going to use the command ARP minus a and what that does is it shows me what's on the network so this internal network being my wi-fi will show you connected devices so what you can see from this is that the 1.1 is actually your router which you could put in your web browser and look up the address and it'll probably say octopi but i know in this case that octopi is going to be 1.5 I also know that the computer I'm working from right now is 1.4. And I'm talking about the last two octets when I do that. So the other devices are other things on my network that do other things. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to bring this up in a browser for the 1.5. So what we're going to do is take that address. We're going to say 192.168.1.5. And we're going to press enter and this hopefully will bring up the actual octopi for the install that we have to do there for configuration so it's come up it says that we're in a setup wizard so i'm going to click next it's going to ask me if i want to do a restart or excuse me restore backup i'm going to go next because i'm not interested in that for now i'm going to actually set up the password so i'm going to call it pi and I'm going to say raspberry for the password. And I'm going to do it again as raspberry. And then I'm going to create an account. Next, I'm going to go next. I'm going to disable anonymous tracking of my usage because I'm not into that. So I'm going to click next. Then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to test the name resolution. It seems to be resolved, so that's good. So I'm going to enable connectivity, click next, plugins for blacklist. So I don't want to use the actual blacklist plugins. So I'm going to enable plugin blacklist processing. For now, this is up to you. Um, for now, I'm just going to skip that and I'm going to change the default name to octo pi 2 so that i know which one this is because i have several octopus and octo pies running in the other room so i'm going to click next and then i'm going to click next on finish and that'll bring up the actual configuration for this particular software on a raspberry pi now we're going to run into other issues we're going to have to do an update because we want to be current. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So we're going to go over to software update and I'm going to say update all. Then I'm going to say proceed. And this may take a few moments. Now there may be several updates that you need to do. I'll show you one for now, but now you know how to navigate to it. And then we'll go back to Clipper and figure out what the rest of the configuration will be. So let's click on Clipper for a second. And as you can see, it says that we got to do a git. That means that we have to go get something and download it. Now, there may be other downloads that occur in the shell script. And the shell script is basically a dot slash and ends in shell. So this is actually the shell script right here. I'm not going to show you too much in Linux on how to navigate because this is about just installing. But let's check on the octopus. Let's do a reload for our octo print pardon me and what we'll do now is we actually have to log into the device with something like putty but in this case i'm going to use TerraTerm. so i'm going to bring up TerraTerm. hopefully you can see what i'm going to be working with i'm going to click on file and i'm going to say new and it's already populated with the ip address in this case 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's set to SSH. SSH means secure shell. It's just like Telnet except the actual transmissions back and forth are ciphered. So we'll click OK to see if we can connect. Now there will be a security warning pop up. We're going to say continue. Then we're going to put in the uh, username for the Pi. In this case it's Pi. And then we're going to do rasp vary as our password. Now normally you want to change your user password away from the default one but I'm showing you the default for your convenience. There are a lot of places where you can Google how to change it. For now I'm going to skip that and I'm going to click OK. So this will bring up our environment for TerraTerm. So I'm going to make this a little bit easier to see. So inside here we already have our setup. So I'm going to go back over to the actual browser and see if we can set this up in a way that's easy to do because TerraTerm's got some cool tricks. So I'm going to bring up the actual instructions. I'm going to copy both of them and then I'm going to go back over to TerraTerm and I'm going to right click and it'll show the two commands. So all I have to do is press OK to process the first command. The second one will not process because there's no line feed carriage return in this case. So it'll begin our download. So I'll make this a better image so you can see what's occurring. So right now it's pulling down files. What I've come to realize is there might be issues in this particular install of Clipper. So you may have to do the git a second time to get things to work correctly or even possibly the shell script because it's caused compiler issues for me. I don't know if it'll be the same for you. So I'm going to do a second git after this completes and then I'm going to do the second command for the shell script and I'm going to do that twice. But for the video, you won't see that part, but I highly recommend it. It will make your life easier. So this part, I'm going to do the actual git a second time just to make sure I got everything. It says that it's OK. So I'm now going to do the shell script. So I'm going to right click and basically grab the command that I had before. And then I'm going to right click again to paste it because it's a single command and hit enter. Now I have to enter the sudo password. In this case it's raspberry and then press enter. Now keep in mind you may have to do this a second time if it doesn't work for you when you do your make menu config because I've been having issues with that and it seems that I have to do this twice. So I'm going to run this a second time just to make sure that it's okay. Okay, now that we're done with Git and we've done the shell script twice, we're going to try and see if we can actually set up the firmware for the Octopus by Big Tree Tech. So I'm going to go back over to the desktop for a moment so you can see what I'm doing. So over here, I'm looking at the actual commands. So they want us to change directory, which is CD, and we're going to go to the tilde clipper directory. Tilde is a way of saying shorthand in this case if you're not familiar with Linux. So I'm going to copy both these commands because this one won't execute. I'll go back over to TerraTerm. I'm going to clear the screen so you can see better what I'm doing. So I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to right click so I can put the commands in and say OK. So it's already done the first command of changing the directory and we can check this by doing by backspace for a second here we can say present working directory which is pwd and this will show us where we are so we only actually navigated down one directory so now we can do the make menu config 
So I'm going to press enter. It's going to bring us into the make menu config. Inside here, I'm going to select our chipset. So the microcontroller in this case, you're going to arrow down, then to the right. But before we do that, I'm going to enable by spacebar the other functionality. So I'm going to right arrow. I'm going to arrow down to the STM32 micro controller that we're using. That's going to give us more options. So we're going to have to select our actual processor. So the processor model in our case is the STM32 F446. So I'm going to hit spacebar. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to double check the bootloader. It should be 32 kilobytes for the bootloader. So we're good there. But the clock reference over here is incorrect. It should be 12. So I'm going to spacebar on that to set it to 12. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to check USB communication. So there are other ways to connect to this board with a series of other things. If you were to hit spacebar, it would select those, but we're going to go back and we're going to select the USB because that's what we're currently using. And so that should be all you need to set up. Now I've had failures on this and that's why I said download twice with Git and do the shell script twice because there might be a program that gets lost. So to leave this and save, you're going to hit Q on the keyboard, then Y, and that should save out your configuration. So we're configured to set up our Clipper compile or build. So we're going to type make, and then we're going to press enter. Hopefully this works. Otherwise, we're going to have to do it again. So it looks like it's working and it's building the Clipper bin file that we're going to use. Now it's going to get slightly confusing as to what I'm going to do next but I'm going to see if I can walk you through it with FileZilla. So here is uh, FileZilla. It's a way to navigate to get files. So I'm going to show you how this works real quick. For hostname, this is the IP address. So it's 192.168.1.5. The username in this case is going to be pi. And then the password is going to be raspberry. And then the port we're going to use 22. And so we're going to do a quick connect and on the right hand side we'll see if it worked. So it's going to prompt us to accept. So we're going to say yes or OK. And then we have a clipper folder. So I'm going to click on clipper or double click, pardon me. Then there's an out file from what we just made. So I'm going to click on that and inside here you can see there's a clipper.bin. So it's not like the firmware.bin that I always show you, but I'll show you how we deal with it. So what we're going to need to do is on this side, we're going to have to navigate to, let's say, our downloads folder. So I'm going to have it up over here, which it already is. So all you have to do is click down, hold it, and drag it across. And that'll pull the file off onto your computer. So at this point, what we need to do is actually remove the drive for our SD drive on our octopus. And then what we need to do is actually insert this into here. Now we already know the connection is good from our last firmware load with Marlin. So all we have to do is plug this in to load a different firmware. So you're gonna hear a beep obviously. And let's go look at the desktop for a second. And so on the desktop, what you see is the clipper.bin file that we copied over to the downloads folder with FileZilla. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to place it on our drive over here. Now as you can see it says firmware.cur. That means that it recently loaded and cur in this case means current. It doesn't mean cursor. So we're going to rename this just in case we need to use it later. So I'm going to call it TMP or temp and then we're going to say firmware or Marlin. How about that? And then we're going to call it TMP for the extension. If we have an issue where we need to roll back, we can name this to firmware 
dot bin in lowercase and reload it. So we've changed that. Let's go back to the other folder and we're going to rename the clipper to our firmware dot bin so it knows what to load. So firmware dot bin. So we're going to right click on this and we're going to send it to our USB drive, which is our SD. Then we'll remove this and insert it into our board. So in order to do that, what I need to do is actually go back over to the Octopus board, remove the SD drive, remove the SD from it in the USB SD drive, plug it in there, and we're going to power it up with power. So I need to find the power cord real quick here. And I'm going to supply power to this board, and hopefully it will load it. So you should see a flashing light on the board. Now it's probably loaded the firmware. So what we need to do next is actually plug this into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to unplug it from my computer where I was getting power, and I'm going to plug in this end over here. Now what we're going to do is go back to our Telnet session. So as you can see, we're in the actual Terra term for our Telnet session. What we need to find out is what the next instruction is. So we're going to go over to our browser for a moment, and we're going to take a look at what we need to do next. So as you can see, we've already done make. Now we have to figure out what's connected to the drive. And that's important when we set up our config file. So as you can see, if we go over here, we can type this command into actual TerraTerm and find out what the active USB connection is. And then we can save that off for future use. So I'm going to go over to TerraTerm. And inside TerraTerm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. And what's going to happen is it's going to say list the devices inside the serial port folder by ID and the actual star that you see there is called a wildcard. That means anything it sees. So you could have multiple devices connected. So we'll hit enter. And as you can see, this is our actual device. So you're going to want to copy this by right clicking and then you can backspace just to get this out of here. And that's what our actual connection is. So we'll save that someplace else so that we can use that in our configuration file. So what we need to do now is go back into FileZilla and we need to find our configuration file. In this case, I'm showing you how to use an example file. This is for brevity. Um, the example file you're probably still gonna have to configure. And there are things about it that you may need to know. So to find it, using FileZilla, and I'll show you why I'm doing this, is I'm going to go to the Pi directory, then I'm going to go to the Clipper directory, and then there's a config directory that we're going to go to. Inside here, you have all your example files. So I'm going to scroll down through these, and there's going to be one in here for the Octopus. Now it's going to have multiple settings that you may need to configure, and I'll give you a little review on that in a second. So let's see if we can find the SKR or Big Tree Tech. So we have Big Tree Tech. And what we're looking for is this file. So we're going to just drag it over here. Now we're going to have to set up a file in order to use Clipper on our actual configuration. So I'll show you how to do that. So we'll go over to our browser and we'll check the directions. And what it says down here is that we need to stop Clipper for a second. So we're killing a service for a moment or stopping it. So we're gonna copy all three of these commands. Uh, this command right here is actually what your flash device may be. We're not gonna be able to flash right now. So this command or this set of commands, I'm gonna actually skip for the moment. I'm going to see if we can get away with actually copying it from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy from a directory and config the example Cartesian plane 
and it's going to be renamed as printer.config. So I'll copy that command, and you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. So let's go over to TerraTerm and do that command. So inside TerraTerm, I'm just going to right click and do that. And you'll see why now in a second why this is true. So the reason that I had you do that will simplify in a second or you'll understand why in a moment. But we need to install something else here. So I'm going to click on settings and then I'm going to go to plugin manager. I'm going to say get more and I'm going to type clipper. Now what it'll bring up is two things. It'll bring up the Marlin G codes and it'll also bring up the Octo Clipper. So I'm gonna install that. This may take a few moments to install, but once it's done, I'll show you what we do to actually get this to work. So I'm gonna click close and restart now, and then it's gonna proceed with that click on proceed. So it's gonna take a moment, it's going to attempt to reconnect when it comes back up. We'll have a new tab on our actual OctoPrint, or excuse me, OctoPi that you can actually work with. So this is going to take a few moments. So now that it comes up, we now have something called Clipper. <clears throat> now we can't connect to it right away because we have to make one more mod. And this is where more modification will take place. So I'm gonna to have to show you what's going on here. So I'm gonna click on open clipper config. Now we copied over the default config. So I'm gonna have you hit control A on here to highlight everything, cause we're gonna paste over it. And then I'm gonna go back over to the desktop for a moment and I'm going to find the folder for actual downloads. So I need to bring it up real quick here. So I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder and in here we have the generic. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna open it with notepad plus plus. And as you can see, here is the actual config. So this is the default config they generated for it. Now there may be issues that you will run into because you need a fully configured printer in order to use this. And because I'm showing you this on the desktop just to walk you through the steps, up to this point, you have to have a fully built computer. So that means that, or fully bit built printer, pardon me. So that means that you have to have your thermistors installed, probably your steppers installed, and everything else that you're working with. And you'll run into issues like with your end stops. Now they'll be under labeled categories. Now the steppers may vary depending upon what you're working with. And that I'll direct you to the actual website on how to configure that. Or you can ask in the actual Discord chat that I maintain. And someone, either myself or someone else, will walk you through the steps. So I just need to point out some stuff. The exclamation point that you see here means negate. So if something is true, it is then changed to false. So in the case of like an end stop, it's saying on your signal pin, if it is currently true as it reads, but it's the opposite of what you're looking for, you'll put the exclamation point in front of it. And that's called a bang symbol. So it will change the actual logic from true to false or false to true, or it'll say um, triggered or open. So that's one thing you need to know. Now there's also pull-ups that you might run across where there's like a resistor pull-up or something like that, you'll use the caret symbol for that. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna highlight all of this and then we're gonna right click and copy it. Then we're gonna go back over to the browser and inside the browser, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to paste it right here. So we're gonna save that and now we actually have our Clipper configuration stored in here. So what we're gonna to need to do next is understand that there is gonna be functionality that's going to be disabled with the hash in front of it. 
or the pound symbol as some people call it, you can hit backspace to remove that to enable certain functionality. But for now, we're gonna ignore that and I'm just gonna try and set up a simple connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save here. We're gonna reboot right now. So I need to click on the reboot button for the system. We're gonna proceed. And then what we're gonna do is actually go back over to the board and finish this up. So before we can actually can finish this, I actually have to check one thing. So after we had it boot and reload, we need to make sure that our connection inside the config file is correct because we're using a default config. So we need to search on MCU and down here, this may or may not be correct. So we may have to reconnect via TerraTerm to verify this unless you stored it off to the side. So what I'm gonna do is log back into TerraTerm to show you where that is. And that was the command that we used right here. And it probably is gonna look something very similar to this. So I'm gonna copy this command up here. Sorry, wrong command. So it's this one right here. And then I'm going to have to reopen TerraTerm. I'm going to have to use the address. So I'll let you see what I'm doing here in two seconds. So I'm going to connect again. I'm going to say continue. I'm going to do pi. Then I'm going to do rasp vary. Press enter. I'm going to do the command again. And then I'm going to copy the actual line that it has here. I'm going to close out of here. And I'm going to go back over to our web browser. And I'm going to paste what it actually copied. So it's going to be right here. And so that's the correct connection. So I'm gonna save that. You may have to do a restart again. I'm gonna skip that for the moment, but we're gonna go over to the desktop now. So on my workbench, what I'm gonna do is set up a couple of things. I'm gonna attach some end stops and also some thermistors. This isn't a complete configuration. This is just to check connectivity. So one of the things you need to check on here is actually your end stops. So I'm going to power this down for a moment. I'm then going to check my end stops on the website for Big Tree Tech. So what we can do is go over here to GitHub and I'll show you that real quick. So on GitHub, you're going to go to repository. You're then going to type Octo and that should bring you to the Octopus version 1.0 or 1.1 because they've corrected it. And in here, what we need to find is the pinout file for hardware. So I'm just verifying what's here. So down here, we're looking at end stops. So I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see what I'm talking about. But our end stop functionality is down here as well as our functionality for our thermistors. So we need to make sure that we're connected to the right ones because you need both a heat bed and a single hot end by default to use this. So by going through here, we can see it says TB, that's thermal bed. Then we have T0, which would be our first extruder. So we're gonna have to go over to our workbench and we're gonna have to connect two thermistors. So I'm gonna grab one right here. I'm going to connect it to the very first connection that we see. So I believe the heat bed is over here. So I'm gonna line that up and plug it in. Then I'm gonna do the same for our first extruder, which is here, and plug that in. So these are both connected now. Now we need to connect the actual end stops. So I'm gonna move this off and weight it down so that it's uh, in a safe place. And I'm going to connect the end stops as they are shown on the actual browser. So we're going to have to find which one is the X minimum 
and the Y minimum and the Z minimum. So looking at this right here, it's kind of confusing what you're seeing. So we're going to have to go through probably the manual to see what's going on. So a lot of things do change on this particular board configuration. So it can be slightly confusing because they have diag 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So those could be used for multiple things. So one of the tricks you can use is either use the actual pin number. In this case, it's PG6. And we can actually go to VS Code to look at this. So I'm going to open that up so you can see what's going on. So inside VS Code, what we're going to do is we're going to find the pins file. So we're going to go to source. Then we're going to go to pins if it shows up. So it's under core. No, it's not under core. Lovely. Huh. Looks like they moved it around a little. Unless I'm in the wrong folder, which is the case. So we're going to go to source, pins. Then we're going to find our chipset, which is down here. Then we're going to find our actual printer board, which is here. But it's using a common printer board. So we're going to have to find the actual pin number. So the X diag pin in this case is PG6. Then the Y is PG9. And then Z is PG10. So if we go back over to the browser, we can look to see where they are. So in this case, PG6, 9, and 10. So X, Y, and Z. So that's what we need to connect to. But we also need to know if it's voltage ground signal so that we know the order of the end stops we're going to use. So we're going to go back over to the workbench. And on the workbench, I'm going to take out an end stop. And this one is only two pins. So what I'm going to show you is that we need ground and voltage for X. So I'm going to connect those two. Then for the Y, we're going to do the same. We're going to do ground and voltage. And then for Z, we're going to do voltage ground signal. So it's red, black, and green in this case. And so we're going to insert it like so. And that's how it looks when it's installed. So voltage is on top and the green wire being signal is on the bottom. So that's necessary so we can do a connection. So to test this, what we're going to do is go back over to OctoPrint. We're going to try and connect and see what happens. So in order to do that, I have to connect the cabling back to the actual octopus board. So over here, I disconnected it earlier, so I'm going to reconnect this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back over to the browser. I'm going to click connect and see if it works. So it does say there's an MCU issue and to do a firmware restart. So what we're going to do is we're going to click over here and we're going to do a restart of the system. This may take a few moments. There may be other issues that we need to address, such as power on the board. But for now, that would be a full configuration. But this should get you in the neighborhood of setting up your Clipper configuration with Octopus or Octoprint, pardon me. So we got to wait for the actual connection to come back up. There may be issues as I haven't done this before, but uh, hopefully this should work. So I'm going to click on reload. It may take a moment to come back up. Once it's up, what we're going to do is we're going to be on the Clipper tab. We're going to try connecting, but there's probably something else I need to configure here. So I'm going to click on the wrench for a second. 
I'm going to go to the serial port and I'm going to set it to temp printer. The baud rate we can leave is auto. I'm going to save that. And then we're going to try and connect again. So it looks like it connected and everything is good. Now you can do a get status to see if there's any issues. In this case, it says it's ready, but I am using a modified configuration so that you can see that. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and remember to share this tutorial. Also for the people that are donating via either PayPal or Patreon, I am extremely grateful. It helps me offset the costs of buying parts in my time. And thank you very much for that.